J and welcome to Brain Food, where I tell you what's yummy and nutritious for your head. Well, we are on the tail end of November, going into December, and it may seem like a strange time for a zombie review book, but to that I say fooey. It's never a strange time to review a zombie book, especially when it's a good one like today's book, Dia of the Dead, by Britt Brinson. Dia of the Dead follows teenage actress Dia Summers, an Afro-Latina and star of the hit TV show Dia of the Dead, which is about a kick-butt superhero zombie who fights Monsters of the Week on the Bixby Network. Uh, no, no, not, not that Bixby. As a teenage actress, Dia Summers faces many concerns. For starters, one, she always wants to do a good enough job with the hope that the show will be picked up for a second season, thus keeping her and her mom financially stable. Two, she has to navigate the minefield of interpersonal politics of Hollywood without stepping on anyone's toes. And three, talking to the crush of her life, up-and-coming star of movies, Brendan Baker, without seeming like an idiot. And if that wasn't enough, there's a new popular drug making their rounds in Hollywood called Z, which chills people out to the point where they're colder than a graveyard in the winter in the Arctic Circle, and then reanimates them as a living dead. I mean, there's only so much that any young actress can deal with. As if the paparazzi weren't bad enough, they've got nothing on these newly carnivorous meandering cadavers. Thus, Dia Summers has a whole new slew of concerns to worry about as she teams up with her fellow teen actors and actresses to survive the oncoming zombie apocalypse in Hollywood. Now, although this is her first published book, Brett Brunson does a wonderful job in writing a quality story with a compelling and relatable lead character in the form of Dia Summers, teenage actress. I thought this was even more wonderful as it's done the first person perspective, which can be a touch tricky to pull off. I love that we have in this character an Afro-Latina girl instead of yet another white blonde girl. And I feel that is fair to say because the Dia of the Dead TV series in this book feels very much like a homage to the Buffy the Vampire Slayer series from years ago. Heck, Dia's best friend Casey actually plays a character who is the bitchy, I hate using that word, but it seems to fit this character and even she uses it herself to describe herself, the bitchy, rich, snobby villain of high school that we also had in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. What I really enjoyed about Dia Summers is that we have here a human being who runs the wide range of emotions. You know, she's concerned about her TV show being picked up for another series. She has an adorable crush on Brendan Baker. She, you know, she doesn't want to play the interpersonal politics of Hollywood or go out converting the parties. And, but she's also not judging people who do want to go out and party. She would just rather stay home with her mom and watch a movie and relax. And when the zombie apocalypse really starts to pick up steam, she becomes even more fearful, not just for her friends, but for her mom as well. She offers concern and sympathy, even to people in the business who are really mean to her for no fault of her own. She becomes resourceful and thoughtful as to what she has to do. She gets scared, she gets nervous. I mean, we have someone here who would react as any one of us would probably react when faced when, you know, walking meat bags that want to eat you. Now, another character who I really enjoyed this book was Trisha Summers, the mother of Dia Summers, who calls herself a momager. Is basically someone who is a mom and a manager. She is fully supportive of her daughter in being an actress and has sacrificed so much in order for Dia to achieve her dream. She also doesn't use Dia as some kind of replacement or supplement for her own failed dreams or anything like that, which I was really glad to see. She's also very good at keeping Dia grounded and making a lot of these concerns that Dia herself feels and places on her own shoulders feel like so much 
frivolous material that she really doesn't have to worry about. As I said earlier, Brett Brenson does a wonderful job of writing in the first person perspective. And they're also quite good at crafting scenes which just gives you the chills. And sometimes it can be the quiet moments that really stick with you and make a bigger impact than the larger loud moments. For example, let's take a look at this one part here from chapter 14, which I shall read verbatim. The remote to the television was still on the desk. I pressed a few buttons and found the local news channel from earlier. There wasn't any helicopter cam footage or news scrolling by on the ticker. Instead, the camera focused on two empty anchor chairs at the news desk in a silent newsroom. The sight gave me chills. I wondered what happened to Roger Harris and Diane Larson, the two anchors from Eleven Action News. And much like Dia Summers, I too felt a chill when I read that scene. Because imagine it, something that's supposed to be bustling with life and energy, providing news or filling you with fear, and instead is nothing but empty quietness. Ugh. Good job, Brett. All in all, I bought this wonderful book for $5 off of Amazon Kindle and got a good 5-6 to six hours of reading time out of it. I like that it has a wonderful, complex human being at the heart of it. And while the ending was a bit abrupt, it was very much in the style of Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Where you don't know what's coming, the future seems bleak, but there's still a chance for hope. And while zombie movies and books and whatnot have that bleakness to them, I like a little bit of optimism every now and then. Well, I'm Triple J, and that's all I've got left to say. Take care.